All right, ladies and gentlemen, things not looking that great for the Georgia Bulldogs tonight. They're losing to Texas 20 to 7, but this is what everyone's talking about when it comes to the Sugar Bowl. They're tweeting that the mascot, all about the mascot mayhem before the game, the Texas Longhorns, Bevo went after UGA and the Dog Nation is furious about it. Look at that. We're going to have a lot more on that coming up later in the show. But first, the new year has come and gone in deadly fashion in Metro Atlanta. This is others are injured because of celebrations gone awry. Let's get straight over to Ryan Kruger with the first look at the 24 hours of 2019. Yeah, Ron, it certainly has been an unusual beginning to the year. Investigators in multiple counties tonight looking for suspects in different shootings. Gunshots struck the Metro just minutes before and after midnight. The deadliest year ever for officer involved shootings in Georgia claimed one more life just minutes before the clock struck midnight. In the waning moments of 2018, surveillance video shows a man walking into the Big John's package store on Memorial Drive and trying to hold the place up. An off duty police officer working security immediately opens fire, killing the man. It was crazy. Very, I mean, it was cra crazy. Never, never happened uh, before. That was the 94th officer-involved shooting in Georgia in 2018, just under 2017's record-breaking figure for total shootings. But 2018 was deadly like no other. 49 people were killed in officer-involved shootings, nearly double the number from the previous year. But once the clock struck midnight, rogue celebrations put people in Metro Atlanta at risk. In Northwest Atlanta, a nine-year-old boy was hit in the stomach by a stray bullet from celebratory gunfire. A rare and completely preventable injury, according to police. Thankfully, the kid is expected to be okay. Be responsible. These, these gunshots that go up, they must come down. A couple hours later, this Gwinnett County home was heavily damaged by fireworks from the New Year's Eve celebration. The family was able to make it out safely. And up at Lake Hartwell, near the South Carolina line, at least one body was pulled from the lake. A truck drove through the area known as the Broken Bridges. It used to be the old Highway 123 bridge, which connected Stevens County, Georgia, with South Carolina. But the center section was removed 40 years ago. It's not clear how many people were in the truck and what led up to the driver crashing. And Atlanta police tell us tonight they have no suspects in that celebratory gunshot injury. Sadly, it is difficult to tell where exactly that shot was fired from. And as far as the man killed at that liquor store by the off duty cop, his identity has not yet been released. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot for the update there. Tomorrow, family and friends, along with the public, will say goodbye to Henry County Officer Michael Smith. Officer Smith was shot earlier last month while responding to a call about a disturbance at a dental office in McDonough. He died almost three weeks later. He was the sixth Georgia officer to be killed in the line of duty in 2018. A visitation will be held tomorrow night from 6 to 8 at Cannon Funeral Home in McDonough. The service is open to the public. His funeral will be held Thursday afternoon. We have more information on how you can pay tribute to Officer Smith on 11alive.com. We now know the names of two Gwinnett County teens killed by the same gun on New Year's Eve. Police say 15-year-old Devin Hodges was showing three friends a gun inside a crowded shed when he accidentally fired a shot. It hit 17-year-old Chad Carlos, who died. Investigators say Hodges died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound a short time later. A 23-year-old man in jail after police say he tried to kidnap a 9-year-old girl at Universal Orlando's Harry Potter theme park. Police say Jason Michael tried to take the child from a locker area near a ride. The girl got scared, broke free, and ran to her mom. Michael then escaped but was eventually arrested at the Hogwarts Express. Talk about a tough new year. Riders were trapped for eight hours overnight high in the air on a broken fare ride in France. Firefighters used a helicopter to reach the three adults and five teens. Everyone was safely back on the ground by early this morning. A rough start to 2019 for Falcons and Atlanta United owner Arthur Blank. Today, his office confirmed he and his wife Angie are divorcing. The couple married in June 2016. This was Arthur Blank's third marriage. Good news from far, far away. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft just flew by the farthest object ever explored in space. The tiny ice world known as Ultima Thule is past Pluto, a breezy 4 billion miles from Earth. It'll take nearly two years for the explorer to beam back the data it collects. 
Well, let's make a deal. This tweet coming from President Donald Trump today. So could we see a new attitude from our country's lawmakers and leaders to go along with the new year? Today, the president issued a White House invitation to congressional leaders of both parties for a briefing on the border wall. It's set to take place tomorrow afternoon and would be the first sit down meeting with the president, Republicans and Democrats since the government shut down on December 22nd. Now, earlier this week, House Democrats announced a plan to reopen the government, but it did not include that $5 million to fund the border wall that President Trump has said that he wants. So a lot of people talking about this online. Uh, Jim saying that the president did one thing right, inviting both parties to the table, saying that's what we should be seeing all along. Um, other people saying, though, that uh, that this is the president's uh, attempt to try and that it's good that he is because other folks that we're sending to Washington aren't putting in an effort. And this one coming in from Rick, he's saying that this is a trap. He thinks that President Trump wants to take credit for all of this. So we'll have to keep you posted tomorrow once that meeting takes place. Viral claims, political confusion, and a whole lot of fake photos. All year long, we've been verifying what's true and false, and here's a look at some of the biggest claims we've verified. Some of these were fairly easy to debunk. Astronauts didn't smuggle weed on board the International Space Station. Robots aren't looking this lifelike yet. Then there's falsehoods that take some more work. This message going around isn't leading to a sex trafficking site. We tested it, and that presidential alert earlier this year didn't give the government access to your location, camera, or microphone. Microphone. And then there are false claims about really serious topics. The White House did not intentionally doctor footage of a press conference with President Trump and Vladimir Putin. And these photos of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, are not real. Claims that senators could order FBI investigations, false. Claims that Supreme Court justices are immune from criminal or civil charges, false as well. And sometimes the most damaging claims come during the most stressful times. Dishwashers aren't a great place to store valuables during hurricanes, and hotels are not legally required to house your pets during evacuations. The airport didn't flood and sharks aren't swarming your highways. And this pic of Anderson Cooper appearing to make Hurricane Florence look worse, that wasn't even from this year. So what's verified? Well, there are more than 370 absidies in the United States. More than 300,000 people registered to vote in the days after Taylor Swift posted her first political endorsement. And yeah, Starbucks did announce they're switching to new lids that actually use more plastic than their old ones. And sorry, y'all, but Amazon Prime guarantees two-day shipping, not two-day delivery. Also, believe it or not, commenters online blamed the wrong gamer for a shooting at a video game competition in Jacksonville in August. Peanut butter can be dangerous to your dog if it contains xylitol. Space heaters can cause fire hazards if they're plugged into extension cords. And if a service dog approaches you without its owner, it could mean the handler needs your help. Those are just some of the hundreds of stories we verified as true or false this year. And going into 2019, we want to work with with you. Make Verify a part of how you approach rumors and claims. Just send them in to us, we'll do the legwork and show you how we got the answers and hopefully clear up and verify what's true. With your Verify Year Recap, I'm Jason Puckett. All right, back here in our neck of the woods, Alpharetta investigators say one of their officers avoided tragedy after a DUI suspect slammed into the back of her cruiser. They say moments before that impact, she had a hunch she was in harm's way. Uh, but from what I understand, the driver who hit our officer never even uh, touched the brakes. This twisted metal is what's left of an Alpharetta police cruiser. After being smashed by an alleged drunk driver, the officer was assisting with another traffic accident near Holcomb Bridge Road when it happened. Fortunately, the officer was not in her patrol car when the suspect allegedly came flying southbound on a rain slick GA 400 at a high rate of speed. They're estimating the speed was between 80 and 85 miles an hour. And investigators say the driver came barreling through, possibly mesmerized by the flashing blue lights. During that conversation, our officer asked, well, did you see my blue lights? And uh, the, the driver apparently said yes, she did, and didn't know why she didn't stop. Looking at the damage, is the DUI suspect OK? She was. Apparently, she had a, a scratch that required a Band-Aid. Alpharetta police tell us that normally their officers sit in their vehicles while assisting other officers during a traffic investigation. But something just didn't sit right with her. She just had some sort of a bad feeling and decided uh, I need to be out of my car, thankfully got out, but had she been uh, in her car, uh, having been struck at 80, 85 miles an hour from the rear, uh, we 
possibly could have been looking at a tragedy this morning. Yeah, we're glad that didn't happen. By the way, Roswell PD, they're now handling this investigation because it's all part of their jurisdiction. They say the driver's blood alcohol content was nearly three times over the legal limit.